Hello, bonjour, and welcome to another video tutorial here at cpmsolutions.ca. This is Michael LePage. I am a trainer and consultant here at CPM, and today we're going to do another video tutorial, and our topic is a little used activity type. It's called WBS Summary. I'm going to show you what a WBS Summary activity type does in P6 and why you want to be using these in your project plans. Now if you've used Primavera for a little while you probably know that it has a few little what I would call nuances and that's okay I think any software package has its nuances. It's got some some things that are easy to do and some things that sometimes are be a little bit of a challenge for some people. So I'm not here to tell you Primavera is uh, absolutely perfect but what I would like to do is tell you about some of the nuances and show you some of the workarounds and I think that's going to provide you some value. As we talk about WBS summary activities, what we're really, uh, another piece of the puzzle here is these group and sort bars. So these are the yellow and green bars you're going to see on the screen here. So if you haven't seen these before, just a quick review of what they're for. The group and sort bars basically allow you to group your activities uh, into different groupings. So here I'm grouping by my WBS, uh, my work breakdown structure. And the real benefit of these bars, why well, I think they're really cool actually, and I'd like to see them used in other software packages, is that they summarize the activities underneath. So for example, if we look at system design and engineering, I've got four activities down there and they all have different durations. You can see at the top on in the blue bar here, you can see the top uh, group and sort bar actually gives me a total for the original duration of those bars. So uh, of all the activities underneath. So it goes through and it adds up all the activities underneath to give me a total. Well how does it add those up? You know I want you to understand how this really works. To, to really get started here, let's look at the start column first. So how these bars work is they first look at all of the activities underneath and for the start uh, date field it finds the earliest date in the start field. And you can see that that is the first activity September 27th. Okay. In the finish field it does the same thing. It looks at the four activities underneath and finds the latest finish date which is December 22nd and it populates that up here on the bar. So now I've got a start and finish and to, to come up with 85 days it basically counts the number of days between September 27th and December 22nd to come up with 85 days as the original duration summary. Here's where the little nuance comes in. The 85 days, the question will be asked is that 85 calendar days or 85 working days? Because you'll, you'll notice here that there is a calendar applied to each of these activities. It's a 5 by 8 work week calendar which means that I work Monday to Friday and weekends are not workable. Well, Unfortunately, these bars are not smart enough to look at the individual calendars underneath uh, that are assigned to the activities and to calculate a total based on those calendars. But there is a setting here for these group and start bars where they, you can actually tell them to use a particular calendar to uh, do the calculation. And where is that setting? Well, if I go to the Enterprise menu and go down to where all my calendars are, in the calendar global calendar chooser window here, you're going to see there's a field here, a column that says default, and there's a checkbox next to it. So um, right now, that checkbox is telling the group and sort bars to use the 7 by 8 workweek calendar to do its calculations, meaning that weekends are not workable. Watch what happens if I pick the 5 by 8 calendar, put that in there, and then close out of here. I'm going to actually hit F5 on my key forward to do a refresh. Look at that. You can see now that the summary is now 61 days. So Primavera uses that 5 by 8 calendar now to do its calculations. So you can see that there's actually 61 working days between September 27th and December 22nd. 
So now that you understand how those bars do their calculation, you, you're probably going to see that there's a bit of a problem in project plans that use different calendars in different areas of the project. So for example, this first half of my project all uses the 5 by 8 workweek calendar. And I could set the bars to use the same calendar to do the summaries. But down here in field operations section, <coughs> all of these guys use a 7 by 8 work week. So uh, this total of 68 days uh, original duration is not taking into account a 7 by 8 work week calendar, but rather a 5 by 8. So it's not accurate. So you can see that because there's only one calendar that can use, be used for all of the bars, I have a bit of a problem. Now let's start talking about what WBS Summary Activities can do for you. To work through this problem, we're, you can actually use an activity type called a WBS Summary, which basically behaves exactly as these bars do. So let's add a few of these in and see what they can do for us. I'll go up here to System Design Engineering. I'm going to add a new activity. I'm going to basically paste in the name of the activity. And in the calendar field here, I'm going to make sure I put in same calendar 5x8 work week. Now the last thing I need to do, just bring up the bottom half of my screen here, is make sure I set this activity, make a little bit more room here, to this type here, a WBS summary. All right, so now it's set. And you know what? We're going to actually add one more activity. We're going to do it up here. You know what? Scratch that. We're not going to add the uh, second activity. But I want you to see what happens when I reschedule my project with this new system design and engineering WBS summary activity in place. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule my project and look at this activity it actually takes on the same values as these group and sort bars. But what's the advantage? Well, the real advantage is that I can set a calendar for these activities. So here, uh, because all of, my w all of the elements underneath have a 5 by 8 work week, I will set this particular summary activity to have the same calendar. But if I was adding one down here in installation, I would make sure I add my 7 by 8 work week. Now, for simplicity, I've actually added in some other summary uh, activities, uh, but I've got them hidden because of a filter. So if I take this filter off, you will see this activity summary, okay, and it's matching the values. You'll also see this field operation summary. Notice it's got a larger value than 68 because it's taken into account a 7 by 8 work week calendar as well as a summary installation activity type. Got the last one down here, on-site testing. So now what you'll notice is that these WBS summaries, how they work, all you need to do is assign them to a particular WBS uh, element that you want them to summarize and then reschedule your project and make sure you've got the right calendar assigned to them and make sure you assign them as the WBS summary type and they basically act as activities that represent these bars so in, in fact you know I could almost turn the bars off now if I wanted to I'm gonna leave them on for for right now so WBS summary bar these WBS summary activities can really help you to really summarize what's going on now um, as we as we look higher and higher up this list, you're going to notice I don't have one here up at the RoboTram system level. And so right now, the distance between April 5th and January 12th is 196 days based on no weekends being worked. So you can see I still have a problem at the higher level that this original duration cannot summarize all of these activities because I have got two different calendar types. But if you really wanted to know a solution for this, I've kind of worked one up. What I want to know really is how many working days are there total for 
the entire project. How many days are working days? So here I can see basically I need to add up 61 days plus 196 plus 95 plus 86 plus 10 days. And the other caveat there is that I assume that each of these sections get executed one after the other. So I'll do all of my system design, all of my training, all of my field ops in a very linear fashion. I'll do that this section first, this section, and this section. If I have any overlap, then I'm just going to have to stick with what um, the value I get out of here or of a WBS summary activity I choose to add up there. But my solution is to add up the values of all of these summary activities. And here's how I, how I propose to do it. First thing is I create a user-defined field, and I call it working days. And I actually have that field already created in another layout. I'm just going to open up another layout here. So here's the new layout, and it has this a new, newly created field, working days. And I also created a global change. The global change just for each activity looks at the original duration and copies it over here to the working days field. Let's go ahead and run this global change. By the way, there is a vi video tutorial on global changes if you want to check them out. I'm going to go ahead and apply the change. Okay, the change is applied. Close out of here. And you can see now that the working days for the entire project, taken into account non-working weekends in the first half and working weekends in the second half, is a total of 165 days. So that's it's as simple as that, just copying the values over here using a global change, and these values get summarized, summarized just by adding them up instead of over here where it looks at the distance between a start and finish date. That's the end of the video tutorial. I hope this helped you understand what WBS summary activities are for, a little bit about global change, and a little bit of the nuances of using the group and sort bars. My name is Michael Lepage. I hope you have a great day. Thanks again. Bye.